What's going on guys? So in today's video, I had a lot of requests to go over how to create fog in Unreal Engine without using exponential height fog. And an important part of this is that we wanna have fog that works with the path tracer in Unreal Engine. So if you don't know what path tracing is, I have a video, I'll link it up in the corner here. But essentially it's like ray tracing where it shoots light into your scene. So the light comes in, it bounces off of the objects in your scene and it causes indirect lighting, bounce lighting and reactive lighting. Path tracing doesn't work with exponential height fog and uh, fog is a big thing that you want to be able to add it just adds a lot of depth to your scene and it's kind of a big deal that path tracing doesn't work with exponential height fog so uh, we want to find a way around that I'm going to show you guys how to do that uh, right now all right guys so we're here in Unreal Engine and uh, what I want to do here is show you guys how you can get this fog effect so I'll show you what it looks like with it turned off so that's it turned off and I'll turn it back on so that's what we're going to be creating and you can see that it works in path tracing fully. Um, so we can go back to, to lit mode if we want and it'll work there. Or we can go back into path tracing and we get our nice realistic lighting here. So um, you can see it works very well. Alright, so I'm going to show you guys how you can do this. I'll turn off this post processing volume and I'm going to just do everything from scratch. So the first thing that we need to do is add a new post processing volume. So I'm gonna search post process volume and we're just gonna drag it into our scene here. The first thing we're gonna do is search bounds. So you can see under our post process volume settings right here, we have in infinite extend and we're just gonna click true. So that's going to extend the bounds of our post processing volume to the entire scene so that we're not uh, only getting a small area that's affected. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna search uh, material and we're eventually gonna do this. But first what we have to do is uh, create a new material so I'm going to hit uh, right click and create a new material and we'll call it uh, fog, I'll just call it two to have a unique name. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we'll go over here to where we search material within our post process volume and we're just gonna click this little plus button uh, to add an array element and then we're gonna hit uh, asset reference so that we can then take our uh, fog here and we're just going to drag it over and we're going to drop this material into our asset reference. So what's that, that, what that's going to do is apply this material to the post process volume so that, you know, the material is affecting what we're seeing in, uh, in our scene. Now what we can do is open our fog material here. Okay, so we're in our fog material and now there's a couple things that I want to set up before we actually get into creating this material. It's very simple, very basic. Um, but the first thing I want to do is we're just click out into so we have our general material selected and we're gonna go over here to the details panel and what we're gonna do is change the material domain from surface or whatever it's currently set to down to post process that's going to allow us to only affect the emissive color and it's also going to uh, make sure that we're only affecting this post process volume if you don't do this you're gonna get some errors so make sure that you do that before you start or at least before you apply the material. So then the next thing that we're gonna do is we have to change uh, blendable location. So we're gonna go to our details and search blendable. And you can see it comes up here, blendable location. And what we're gonna do is change it from after tone mapping to before tone mapping. And what that's gonna do is if you don't do this, uh, I'm not sure if it, it has this effect in the path tracing mode, but if you are viewing your scene in the lit mode, it makes it look like some objects are kind of vibrating. It doesn't really look right uh, if you don't change it to before tone mapping. So make sure that you do that before you apply your material or you're gonna get some weird things happening. Now we can actually get started with this, we're making our material. So the first thing we're gonna do is right click and we're gonna type depth fade and we're gonna get a depth fade node. So we need to set our opacity. We also need to set our fade distance. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click and get two constant nodes. We're gonna get one there and we're also going to get another one. So we're gonna get another constant. And the first one, uh, this is going to be our opacity. And we're gonna set this to, you know, like 
whatever you want. I'm probably going to do like 0.3 because that's going to give us like a really light, um, thin fog. But if you want to do like really thick fog, you're going to want it closer to one. So it's going to be between zero and one, zero being very thin, invisible fog and one being completely like opaque, very thick fog. Now we're going to set our, uh, fade distance. So we'll just take this and drag it into our fade distance. You know, we're just setting a value here. So, you know, I'm going to do something like 10,000. And this is, uh, you know, kind of dependent on the size of your scene. So you can just mess around with this, but it's very easy to play with. Once you've got your material applied, you can just change it and then apply the update to your scene and see what happens. The next type of node that we need, and that's going to be a linear interpolate node. So a lerp node, take the depth fade and put this into the alpha of the lerp node. And then the next thing that we're gonna do is we need a constant four vector node okay so we have constant and we're going to go down here to four vector and uh, we're just going to use this to set our color so we're going to take this and we're going to take it and put it into the b slot of the lerp node and then we're just going to go over here and we can click on the color and then just set it to whatever you want i'm going to set mine to white because i just want normal um, fog but you can set yours to red, green, blue, any color that you want in the spectrum. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to right click and we're going to search for scene texture. Okay, so we're going to go down here to texture and click scene texture. And we'll just position it up here, grab this and put it into the A slot of the lerp node. And we're going to click on this. And now what we need to do is change the scene texture ID down here to post process input zero. We're basically referencing this, we're referencing the color, and then we're re referencing the depth fade, and that all is combining into our emissive color. And we're putting that into our emissive color. And now what we can do, click apply. Now you can see, we'll just save this real quick. Now you can see it's applied it to our scene. And now we have this nice layer of fog, and we can always you know, turn this off to see what we're doing. So that's what it was before. And now we have the fog. And as you can see, it works with path tracing. So uh, this is very effective and uh, you know you can, you can move throughout your scene and it constantly stays the same uh, thickness as you move and it's, you know, it's very quick, it's, it's not very heavy on your GPU. And once again, it also works in the lit mode. This is what we're going for. And if you go back into your fog material, you can change all the settings you want. So we can change our uh, distance so that it's much closer to us. So we'll set it to a thousand, we'll click apply, and now we have really, really thick fog. That's very close to us. And then we can also increase our, um, our density or opacity. And maybe I'll just make this a little further away so that, you know, we can still see something. So I'll set it to 5,000, we'll click apply. And there we go, we have very thick fog in our scene. So you can basically just customize this any way you want. And we can also always change the color of the fog by changing that uh, changing that uh, vector parameter. So we, you know, set it to something like a, a nice teal color, click OK, and we'll apply that. And now we have this really cool teal fog in our scene. So uh, it's very similar to exponential height fog in terms of look, and you can customize it. Uh, it's very straightforward very simple so we don't have a lot of things that we have to mess with in order to change it so so that's about it for this tutorial guys uh, i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it helpful so i just want to say thank you to everybody supporting the channel uh, we've passed a thousand subscribers which is amazing if you guys like this video leave a like and also leave a comment if you guys have any suggestions for future videos or if you want to say something about this video i love to hear the discussion and also don't forget to subscribe for future content i'm working on a course for filmmaking in unreal engine and i have a lot of new content coming up from that as well as a lot of other things so uh, you don't want to miss that stuff so thank you guys for watching and have a good one